Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number four at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Let's take a look at the field for the Sunshine Turf. Florida Breds going a mile and an eighth on the grass. $75,000 is the purse. Sham Rocket Mike, the number two, is looking for the rare Sunshine Classic on dirt. Sunshine Turf double. Source is wheeling back in only a week for Todd Pletcher and moving back to his preferred surface, you would think. Uh, yeah, he, this is definitely his preferred service. I know he won the uh, Sunshine Classic on the main track last time. Um, you would not be betting him off of that race for sure. I mean, he got the job done in there, but it was far from impressive and slow time. Just way better on the grass. And he's got the you know graded stakes credentials to just be a, almost a standout in here. I'm curious as to your thoughts on the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Um it says that the seven Sigaloso, the six Max KO have speed. I'm not sure about the seven. I think the six Max KO is going, and I wouldn't be surprised if the one Cusina is close to the pace as well. I think that's probably true. Um, I, I, either way, I didn't think they were necessarily going to go that fast in here, um, which I guess in, in some ways uh, works against the favorite in this race. I also you know, just wouldn't be surprised enough to four lure him in was a little bit closer this time. He's not going to be on the lead, but he's not a slow horse early. Let's watch the number one Cusina's most recent start. This is a three-quarter of a mile sprint at Aqueduct, and he settled in behind the three leaders, got to the outside in the stretch. It looks like he's going to make a run, and almost as soon as he is in contention, he flattens out. Yeah, that's true. Um, listen, I, I'm a huge fan of this horse. I actually bet him in this race, and as they came through the upper stretch, I thought he was going to win. And um, then he just you know, wasn't quite good enough. Now, it is worth pointing out that the one-two finishers in there they're both um, pretty good turf sprinters. I think they're both underrated horses. I'm a huge fan of Casina. I just don't know if I want to bet I'm stretching all the way out in this race. I think the big angle, if you are taking a bullish approach to him stretching out, is that he was claimed by Michael Maker three starts back. Maker just makes hay stretching horses out on the turf. Looking at this pedigree up close, there's not a lot of distance. If you go back in the pedigree, it's the family of Kentucky Derby winner Giacomo, Tiago. I think Luis Saez is going to be aggressive and either try to get to the lead with this horse or maybe sit the pocket. Like you, I'm a fan of his. The distance is a big question, but I think on his best day, he can run with these horses. Sham Rocket, however, is the horse to beat. As we mentioned in the open, he has run in graded stakes races. He saw We saw him win on dirt last week. He's coming back on short notice. He ran last on turf in the Red Smith, two starts back against better. I really couldn't find the excuse for him that day. There was a fast pace. He came with a run. He was okay. Yeah, it was just a, a much tougher field, though. I guess that's the, the one thing I think you always want to keep in mind. I mean, uh, basically all of his turf races through 2021, when he went two for 11, they're just all against way better horses than this. And he more than held his own in some of those races, Dan. He's pace compromised most of the time. You know, it's not like he's some kind of a superstar Pletcher, um, at least early on here in, in 2022, being very realistic with this horse, putting him in races where he's supposed to be tough. I suspect he's going to be tough uh, in this race on Saturday at a very short price. But at a very short price, it's not like this horse can't be had. He was beaten in the Sunshine Turf at Gulfstream to kick off his 2021 campaign. He was beaten in the Turf Classic at Tampa Bay in a race where he was favored. He is the horse to beat. How low will you go on the tote? Hercules, the number three, needs strong improvement as he as he makes his turf debut. Not a lot of grass in this pedigree, Mike. The Sire Brethren, three for 112 with first-time turf runners. The dam has fold a turf winner, however. Yeah, I mean, listen, I didn't see, you know, any reason to try to bet this horse uh, switching to turf based on his pedigree. I'm certainly not betting him off of his dirt races. Um, if he was ever going to beat Shamrock, wasn't he going to do it last time when Shamrock barely showed up?
Lure him in the number four is a horse coming off a little bit of a break. Not much to worry about. Two and a half months. He's turning all the way back in distance. It seemed like the Hesparn was really intent on running him those marathons, including this race last time out at Del Mar. It was an interesting race where Edwin Maldonado took him to the four path on the backstretch and he made a wide move on the turn. And I thought he finished okay to be third in here with a solid buyer. This was a good field. Produced a couple of next out winners, including the runner up who came back to win an $80,000 claimer at the fairgrounds with a 92 buyer. Yeah, decent field. Um, he ran fine in there. No real excuse. Um, just probably finished right where he was supposed to finish against that group. I liked his win two starts back. That was a mile and a quarter. Um, they sort of rode him the same kind of way, though. Dan, good start, but they just raided him, sat him three or four wide all the way around the track. Um, and I like the way that he store, stayed on and finally wore that field down at the end. I don't mind him cutting back in distance for years. I sort of referenced at the open. I think he's got enough tactical speed to sit a trip in here. And he's got plenty of figures that put him pretty close to the favorite in this race. Stolen Drive, the number five, was a good turf horse at Gulfstream at two, at three. As an older horse, he sort of settled in the middle claiming ranks. I'm not interested in his last race where he ran on synthetic. His race before that on turf was okay, but it was for 25000 and he was claimed. Uh, he was really taking a big step up in class here. He really is. He's a very consistent horse, and he's certainly good enough uh, on turf, I guess, to be competitive in this race. You know, I wonder if he's actually good enough to come out on top against this field, especially at a mile and an eighth, which I feel like could be pushing it for this horse. I mean, I guess it's worth pointing out, Dan, I know they took this horse from Gargan. Um, this, this trainer, I'm not familiar with this guy, but he's winning a lot of races, and he's very good off the claim. Max K.O., the number six, reunites with Arad Ortiz, who was aboard for the last victory. Three starts back at Kentucky Downs. You look good dusting off that $25,000 starter allowance group, albeit with a good trip. I wonder if the claiming crown Emerald defeat is the favorite last time out was simply a situation that he didn't get his usual forward early position. He had to come from a little bit farther out of it. And that field has come back pretty good. The runner up winning the grade three tropical turf in his next start with a 94 buyer. Yeah, I didn't mind his race last time. Um, another horse that they just sort of raided wide all the way around the track in there. He um, took a run at the one, two finishers who were up front uh, around that final turn. The race, he couldn't get to those horses and he got tired at the end. Um, but at least he made a run into a race that was really holding together up front. Obviously, those figures at his first two starts off the claim for, for Sappy Joseph, they put him right in the mix in this race. Completely the field is the number seven, Sigaloso, who was wired last time out in the Tropical Park Derby. And not only did the horse on the lead just take that field all the way to the wire, but it was a solid enough group. The fourth horse coming back to run third in an allowance race with an 87 buyer. He's lightly raced. He just turned four. He does have some tactical speed, but he needs a buyer boost. He's yet to reach 90 on the buyer plateau. Yeah, I just thought it was a tough spot for him. Um, he didn't run well last time, but that never surprised. Uh, it's a pretty nice horse for Pletcher. Um, feels like he's going to be heard from in some graded stakes races this year. Um, you know, I guess if you were going to take him, Dan, you would take him off the allowance win last September at Monmouth, where he just got absolutely loose. And I, I mean, this this pace isn't going to be fast. I don't think he's getting loose. Well, let's take a look at our top picks in the Sunshine Turf. The two Sham Rocket is the horse to beat. I think we're going to try to beat him, or at least try to beat him with price or horses. Lure him in has been very consistent in Southern California. He's cutting back in distance. You like this cutback for him. Yeah, I don't mind him cutting back to this distance. You know, to me, he was just sort of a logical other horse if you were trying to beat Sham Rocket in this race. I think he's going to get a good trip. Um, I think his recent form is fine, and I feel like uh, Rob has probably found a pretty good spot to ship him into here. Sham Rocket's the horse to beat. I just didn't really want a really short price on a horse who, for me, Dan, most of his career, he's just sort of been sucking along against better horses and picking up figures. So your horse is cutting back in distance. My top pick, the one Kusina, is stretching out, hopefully with some tactical speed for a trainer that has done great work off the claim in recent years, stretching out horses on turf. 4216 for Mike, 1245 for me. It's the Sunshine Turf, one of two stakes races at Gulfstream Park on Saturday, playing with DRF bets. Good luck.